In this slideshow, you'll hopefully learn some strategies to remember the names of some polyatomic ions, because they're a really important part of chemistry. The whole list can look a little daunting, but here are some tricks that will hopefully make it a little easier. The first tool you can use is knob, cob, soy, poi, to remember the eights. These are four compounds that end with eight that you can remember by using this phrase. It may sound weird, but here's how it works. Nitrate and carbonate, NO3 and CO3, both have three oxygens, so they're knob and cob, because the B looks a little bit like a three. And sulfate and phosphate both have four oxygens, and they're soy poi, because in uppercase Y it looks like a four. So if you write out knob, cob, soy poi, you have the number of oxygens you need and the first element for each ion. You can also remember the charges if you remember knob, cob, soy, poi, and one, two, two, three. One, two, two, three are the negative ions for each of these four polyatomic ions in order. The names are just the elements nitro nitrogen, carbon, sulfur, and phosphorus, and the suffix eight. Just remember knob, cob, soy, poi, and you have the four ions and their charges. The next thing you can remember for polyatomic ions is the device Hi, I'm a Piranha. This one probably sounds even weirder, but trust me, it works. This helps you remember the order for naming when you change the number of oxygens in a polyatomic ion. If you can remember the capital letters, you have everything you need to name a polyatomic ion. Hi means hypoite, so for example, hypochlorite is chlorine with the lowest amount of oxygens possible, one. Then, as you move through hi, I'm a piranha, you just add oxygens. It goes from hypoite to ite to eight to per eight. And an example is with chlorine. Not all elements can make ions with one, two, three, and four oxygens, but chlorine can. So you have hypochlorite, chlorite, chlorate, and perchlorate. You can even use knob, cob, soy, poi to tell you the eight, and then just use hi, I'm a piranha to find out what the ion would be if there were a different amount of oxygens. You just have to remember that sulfate, SO4, is an eight, and it has four oxygens, but nitrate, NO3, is also an eight, and it only has three oxygens. So it depends on the element, uh, which number of oxygens is the eight, but the rule hi, I'm a piranha works from there. For example, nitrite is NO2 and sulfite is SO3. Each one is an eight, and each one has one less oxygen than the eight. One last rule you can use is when you're adding hydrogens, and this one is pretty easy. You can add a hydrogen to any negative polyatomic ion by adding H to the front of the formula and adding one to its charge. So for example, CO3 two minus, when it gets a hydrogen added to it, becomes HCO3 minus. And for the name, you can add bi to the front of the name, so carbonate just becomes bicarbonate. You can also add the word hydrogen to make it hydrogen carbonate, but bi is usually easier. The only time you have to use the word hydrogen and not the prefix bi is when you add more than one. Then you use di and the number of hydrogens you're adding. So for example, dihydrogen phosphate is the only name for H2PO4 minus. So hopefully, knob, cob, soy, poi, and hi, I'm a piranha help you out for your polyatomic ions quiz and at least makes it a little easier. But there are some ions you have to know that don't have a rule. These ones can be tricky, but at least the list is smaller now that you have the devices for your other ions. A lot of them come from the names of the elements themselves, like bromate, permanganate, chromate, and dichromate. And ammonium is the only one you have to know with a positive charge. And it's at least a lot easier trying to memorize this small list than trying to tackle the whole big list. So hopefully these devices helped you out a little bit on your polyatomic ions quiz and will help remembering the entire list a little bit easier.